Welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome and welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. Oh, I just wanted to kind of go into a little car flow and see what comes through today. Uh, I feel like I've got a lot of energy updates. I've done a few videos and I haven't posted them yet just some flow. Most of the time my guides are just talking about being in a space of compassion <laughs> lately and in a space of love. And one of the things are be us having compassion for ourselves. If we don't have gratitude for ourselves, our lives, what we have in our lives, the people in our lives, then that is difficult for us to feel that and to express gratitude to what is outside of us. Now, sometimes it's easier to express gratitude for what's outside of us because that's what we're used to doing. But we aren't expressing the fullness of who we are if we're not in a place of compassion for ourselves. And that's just something I wanted to kind of um, to point out. So without further ado, ish, I'm gonna do a little light language. And as we allow ourselves to capitalize with a capital I, a capital I see, a capital I am, it's like a play on words, I'm seeing the letter M. As we allow ourselves to capitalize on the frequencies of the I am presence, of the presence of, I'm hearing under the tree, this must be a pre-Christmas. <laughs> we must recognize that our gifts are many in quantity. We have much more than we think we do. Oh, I'm seeing this as a relevance to Thanksgiving in the United States. Many of us have access and yet we have yet to open the gift. We have yet to open the box, for we have boxed ourselves into human complacency. Let us play with this for a moment. Yes, let's. Our stream source connection is connected to a long line of bandwidths, tunes, frequencies, and energetics. And oftentimes we have pigeonholed ourselves, this is a word that's come up a few times, into one particular idea or ideology or lock and key technology or attunement or idea that or concept that keeps us trapped and ensnared within. When I say ensnare, I see the three hairs, uh, the rabbit, and which represents fear in um, the native uh, cultures and transcending fear. We have wrapped ourselves uh, with cloak and key, one might say, in a, an arena that is afraid, is afraid of truly harnessing the beauty of the human technology. And let us play with this for a moment. <laughs> Our technology is unwrapping itself. Yet many people are fighting uh, to, I'm seeing, I'm seeing people fighting with themselves, are fighting to keep things under wrap and key. Now this is a uh, multi-dimensional message. So we could say that the collective is also fighting to keep things under cloak and key and to keep certain things from the public eye and we are starting to see that being unwrapped as well as we have for the previous uh, few years. However, and we will continue to see this. However, we are talking now about the human skeletons, the skeletons that are in the closet, for we all have them from one perspective, whether those skeletons be our own self, um, our own self, I'm hearing depravity. So this is a play on words like self-loathing, um, lack of self-respect, lack of self-love and self-care. And this is in reference to just being compassionate as a human being, forgiving ourselves for 
deeds or actions that we felt uh, that we feel guilt over forgiving ourselves for not feeling a certain way that we feel that we should forgiving ourselves for letting someone else down for the more we recognize that in our own compassion of ourselves we are then able to forgive others who we may feel have let us down and this is important right now for in this time frame and in this place of thanksgiving we are being called to give thanks for what we have been given and many of us are holding back from giving to ourselves giving ourselves what we need in order to access a deeper part of ourselves so this is a play on words and i'll get to this in just a minute i'm just going to stay in flow for as we start to organize our scattered energies, we start to call back to us the power we've given away. We start to remember that we have more power than we have remembered. We bring ourselves into a fuller recognition that our brothers and sisters are our brothers and sisters. We begin to recognize that we are all on this boat together that is called Earth. Yet we do not all exist within the same reality. We are layered up, we might say. We all hold many layers of different forms of how we convey uh, different forms. I'm seeing a reference to being human, being on Earth. I'm seeing a reference to we all look different. We all have a different way that we interact with Earth. We all see Earth in a different way. Therefore, each of our reality is truly expressed differently. And part of this compassion that we are um, being invited to recognize needs to start from within. We are speaking in a myriad of subjects right now in this particular transmission. And it's difficult for me to break this down as I drive, so I might have to go back and listen and, and share. But it's important for us to step out of our own way. Earlier in this message, we were trying to convey that many people have been holding on tightly to keys that they didn't know they had. They have, I'm seeing a huge key ring and people are afraid um, and the fear isn't the only thing. Um, I'm going back to complacency and what I'm hearing is lazy. So I'm just hearing people are too lazy or complacent to actually look and see what's behind the door. They're, they've lost their curiosity for life. They are so used to habitually being pulled or pushed or um, programmed to go into a particular door that they're not recognizing that they have keys to other doors and they're not recognizing that the other doors are here now. So when we open up our field, when we open up to our feelings, when we feel into this field of compassion, and I'm hearing compression and passion, it burns away the old reality picture. It allows us to see with more clarity the picture that we are weaving, that we have access to, that we have been pointed to. And now we look and see where we would like to travel, where we would like to go. It allows us to gain access to portals that were unpassable before. Oh, that's a big plan words. For we are passing through a membrane, we might say, in this moment. And we could use this as a, an um, analogy to the membranes in the body opening, the folds in the brain um, becoming more permeable, the cells in the body becoming more fine-tuned, the sounds and sights and smells and patterns becoming more sensible. So this is a play of words, like we are being able to sense them more and it makes more sense to us. You know, some of us not so much because maybe we've been, un, we've unknowingly not done the work. 
And this gives us the ability to feel our environment. And when we feel our environment, I'm actually being called to say that our environment right now, what they're showing me is their body. So feeling our body, but also sensing what's around us. It allows us to create with more precision. We are tired, many of us, of being in a state of division. Yet the body is in a constant cell mitosis and also a state of division that allows us to have more. Yet this has been misconstrued over the years and inverted, one might say, when it comes to how we play in our reality. For as we find our true divinity, we come back to the unity that was lost in the division for nothing has really been divided. We are all coming back to the truth of our unification in oneness. Moving back into what some call the source energy uh, flux. This is a plan word. It's like energy. Uh, Try to stay in flow right now. Woo. Good morning. I don't have a pause button. So you guys are just going to drink my coffee with me. Mm. So let us wrap up all of these ideas into one sentence or one paragraph. We must find compassion with ourselves and with each other. We must ignite our curiosity and compassion to allow for compression in the heart and to break through the compression that we have um, inorganically been pressed upon. So again, I'm seeing double meanings in all of this. We think of compression, it's a good thing in heart math, but if you think of compression and for holding information, a lot of information is compressed into our bodies, into our knowingness. Yet at the same time, that is has reached I'm hearing depressurization. So now it's time to open up all that compression, open up what's inside, the gifts under the tree, and start to allow ourselves to see with more clarity, which is what we said earlier, what's available to us. And step away from, I'm um, hearing self-judgment, blame, fear, and quit negotiating with ourselves negotiating with the false matrix uh, technology that is being used um, in order to keep us under lock and key. So this is also a double meaning. In one form of reality, us versus them, there is a controller society, blah, blah, blah. I say blah, 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 because really um, at a certain level that's relevant, but at the more expansive levels, that's not even real. It's only an idea or concept that's been pressed upon us, that we've been compressed into to keep us on a certain path, on a certain, you know, in a certain dialogue with ourselves. And when we repeat these patterns, it creates more of the same repeat patterns. So we would invite everybody to step away from the traditional sense of what our reality is and to step back into the tradition of our ancient ancestors, which was to dance, which was to storytell with excitement and passion, which was to share our dreams, which was to um, help one another and use our own gifts and tools in, in the village. So I'm seeing like a whole tribe of, let's say our ancestors, some of all, each tribe, tribal member had their purpose. And I'm not referencing, by the way, I'm referencing what people know they have gifts on. Like you don't necessarily, and I'm seeing like, what's that movie with the girl that has the arrow? to kill, uh, not to kill a mockingbird, um, mocking Jay or whatever. But you know how they had jobs 
because of how they tested out or they got chosen for these jobs. What I'm being shown is that's, we have gifts that are inside of us and each of them has a packaging, but each gift is individual and unique to the person. So you might have a, in a tribe, you might have a shaman. You might have several shamans. You might have a person who cooks because that's what, you know, the chef. You'll have the mothers that that's what their gifts are. You'll have the hunters and you'll have the um, builders. But it, it's something more of people coming together and saying, I like to work with my hands. I, I am an artist. This is what I've always wanted to explore. It doesn't mean that people are just, I am seeing a vision of people just coming out of this idea that they have to put on a suit and tie or the opposite. Some people want to have that experience and are like, I'm going to put on a suit and tie and I'm going to remake the corporate world because I love working with people. I love seeing results. I love uh, companies coming together and building um, wonderful things. There, That's a gift. I would not necessarily be a, a, a corporate leader or CEO. My gift is clearly not organization. Some people, their gifts are organization. So there's certain things that are nipping at us. I'm hearing nipping at our heels right now saying, have you tried this? Have you looked at this? And where are you blocking yourself from feeling the biggest expansion that you can? And by the way, this is relevant for me too. Um, I was limiting myself. I do this some from time to time. Sometimes we think, well, I am this or I am that, but I am shouldn't be limiting. Just because I am a healer doesn't mean that's all that I am. And it doesn't mean that that's a label that I want to attach to myself because theoretically everybody has the ability to heal themselves. So we're all healers <laughs> from another perspective. So again, not um, limiting ourselves. And then I get the question, well, how can I be limitless yet be organized? Well, that's when you might need help from somebody else to get you into that space. So these are all things just to kind of keep in mind. Um, and I'm going to kind of end on that note. That wasn't a very organized presentation. Uh, now that I say that, but, um, I do feel that it's relevant for us just to start asking ourselves basic questions. And here's what I'm being called to ask. What is it about myself that I feel um, I struggle with the most? What is it that I would find the most joy in? What would be really fun for me to do or try or experience right now that's realistic? What is it that one thing today that I could do that would bring me joy? What is one thing that I am grateful for that I have already? What is something I'd like to have that I would be really grateful for? And can I realistically see that unfolding in my life? How would that look? How would that feel? Can I trust that that will be something that comes to me if I am open to it? What am I closed off to? Who am I judging and, and can I let that go? What I was hearing was, who am I judging and why? that's not even it. Who am I judging and can I let that go and not judge? And what is it in myself that I'm judging? Maybe in that case, why? Sometimes we ask why we're judging someone else. It gives us the answers to why we're judging ourselves. Um, um, How can I be more um, at one with myself? I just There's a lot of questions that come up that are powerful for our own self-awareness. And that in itself is a gift that we may not be recognizing, this ability to analyze and look at ourselves from a broader perspective. So I'm going to end on that note for now. In love and light, thank you so much for tuning in. Namaste.